Hello and welcome to our series where we'll be looking at a number of books written by historians, obviously in the field of history. And we will be looking at works that I believe have actually contributed uh, new perspectives and given us examples of how we can actually engage with history and write history. And for this week, I'd like to talk about the work by Svetan Todorov, The Conquest of America. Now, Todorov's work is perhaps not so well known in this part of the world, but it is, in my opinion, one of the most important books that have been written about a subject that has already been discussed at length by many authors. Um, the Conquest of America, um, going back to the 16th century, of course, is a theme that appears in many historical writings before this. But what is unique about Todorov's approach is how he attempts an account of the conquest of America seen through the lens of linguistics and the theory of language. Todorov's argument in this book is an interesting one because Todorov sees the conquest of America as not merely a contestation between two kingdoms, two nations, or two powers, but he examines it through the lens of language and differences in language systems. And Todorov starts his uh, analysis with a simple premise, namely the idea that the process of conquering the American continent begins through language. For Todorov, the very act of naming this continent America was in fact the first act of violence. And from this premise, Todorov builds a very interesting argument where he looks at the clash between two cultures and civilizations, that of the Europeans and that of the Native Americans. But he studies, he studies this um, um, engagement, this conflict, through the lens of different language systems that do not actually communicate with one another. One of the early arguments in Todorov's book is that Columbus and the other Europeans who accompanied him on the expedition to the American continent had brought with them their own language system and their own vocabulary. And in this sense, the discovery of America, the so-called discovery of America, was as much an act of naming as it was a process of discovery and colonization. It gives the example of how uh, in the process of encountering the Americans, Native Americans for the first time, Columbus and his followers began to name the cities and the mountains and the rivers and the geography that they met um, according to a register that was European. And in the process of doing so, America is invented. It is created by the Europeans who claim to have discovered it. What is interesting about Todorov's argument is that as the Native Americans and the Europeans come to blows, when they come into conflict, both sides do not actually understand each other. And one of the reasons for this is, as Todorov argues, because the Euro Europeans do not feel the need to understand the Native Americans. They do not feel the need to understand their belief systems. And he gives us several interesting examples of how and when these clashes of perspectives and understandings take place. Uh, one example is um, when he recounts the story of how the conquistadors, as they were approaching the center of Native American power, were on the lookout for gold. Of course, that's the reason why they were in America in the first place, to, to seek you know, gold and other wealth uh, in the American continent. The ruler of the Native Americans, Montezuma, doesn't understand why the Europeans are there, and in his effort to appease the Europeans, sends them gifts of gold in order to placate them and, and, and to hopefully you know, persuade them to return back where they came from. Uh, this is an instance where these two cultures actually do not communicate and do not understand one another. And of course, it leads inevitably uh, to the Europeans being uh, persuaded that there is much wealth in the land and therefore they pursue their political objectives uh, with more fervor. The net result at the end of all this is uh, the complete uh, 
extermination and eradication of you know American culture, Native American culture, and this for Todorov is uh, the tragedy of the American, the conquest of the Americas, uh, because what happens is with the victory of the Europeans over the native communities of the American continent, these two cultures fail to coexist with one another. The victory of the Europeans means that European civilization can only exist by denying the identity and the belief systems and the languages and the culture of the Native Americans. And so Todorov's work is actually a very interesting work um, for us to read today because in so many ways, it uh, talks to us about the connection between language and power. And as a piece of historical writing, it is a historical account of the conquest of America, but it is one which analyzes this painful and difficult process through the lens of linguistics. It's a very good example of the new kind of historical writing, the new kind of historiography that uh, has emerged in the world over the last few decades. And it might you know, give us um, uh, ideas or, or examples, models to, uh, to emulate, uh, to look at other ways of writing history. Uh, but this is an account, a historical account of the conquest of America, but it is more than simply a work of history. It is a work of history that brings to history linguistics, semiotics, uh, the philosophy of language, and other um, you know, theories and concepts from other domains. And I think it is a very good example of the kind of modern historical analysis that the world needs today.